with consumables. My next guest is the co-CEO of a family wine business that spans two continents and traces its roots back to the early 1900s. Christina Mariani May is with us. She is third generation proprietor of Banfi Vintners. It is one of the largest importers of wine to the States. Christina, very glad to see you. This is a very happy sort of six minute stretch for me from chocolate <laughs> to wine. I know you brought some bottles along, but before we go through each of those, are you seeing more demand, more interest from people who actually want to invest in wine? Definitely, definitely in the United States, because the U.S. is now the number one consuming wine country in the world. Which is a surprise probably to some people, because we usually think of France or Spain or Italy, Italy surpassing us. Exactly. So everybody's more moving into the United States. And in the past five years, according to Gomberg Fredrickson, the U.S. wine consumption's grown about 15 percent. So they're really is a trend in the United States for people to be spending more and more on wine and at higher price points. So, Christina, okay, that was going to be my next question. I mean, because there's really a range out there. I mean, you can buy, where's the demand? Is it more on the lower end? Is it in the middle? Or is it at, to the higher point? Well, price? demand will always be at the lower point, um, very high, but it's moving to the $15, $20 and up price point. There's about 360 million cases of wine consumed in the United States. So it is steep, steep levels. But when you go to those higher price points, you're seeing more and more people investing in wine. But there's some tricks to investing in a good wine that okay, we have to go so over. Please share them, yeah. Okay, so really, when you're investing in wine, what you want to make sure, first and foremost, is that you have a wine that you will enjoy consuming on your own and personal. So even if you're going to do it for investment reasons, you should still actually like it. You have to, because wine's not a guarantee, it's a living entity. It can mature beautifully with time, but we also have what we have called the romance factor. You know when you go on vacation and you taste a wine and it tastes magnificent and even your significant other looks that much more beautiful and then you come home and you taste it and it's different. There's a whole different kind of theme developing here. Well, we'll go with it. No, it's true. Exactly. So it's really quite a different um, level that wines can take on. So the most important thing is find a wine that you can trust and most of it is it by a producer and a global brand that has a demand in the whole market. So now some of these bottles are classics. People will pretty much know right away, or at least people who consume wine. And then some of these are sleepers. Correct. For someone who wants to dip his or her toe in but doesn't want to pay a ton of money. Um, Is there a way to yeah. do it? Yes, and one, you can go to different countries, and you go outside the United States and you can find wines that have a great consumer appeal. And what we have here is we have some Super Tuscans. That's an area where you can go within Italy that you can find wines that are very international in style, but still are very up and coming. Um, and go to a producer that you trust. I think that's very important. Between we have Banfi, we have different categories in Chile, um, Australia, I think it's very important important because ratings will go up and down with the vintages but if you know you have a good producer you'll get consistent really outstanding quality year in year out now I know in addition to being an importer you also have this fantastic property your family does in Tuscany and this Correct. is really part of this multifaceted business there's a shot which is gonna make everybody cry <laughs> with envy but um, you have a, a boutique property right a boutique resort property we really do and the key thing about knowing your wines is also knowing the story behind them. So at Castello Banfi and Montalcino, people can go and really be educated about it. They can stay on the property, they can learn about the wines, they can learn about the region, and then they're much more, much more willing to invest if you know the story, the people, the technology, and the investment that's behind it. Plus, it's not really too much of an unpleasant learning environment, we have to say. <laughs> Christina, thanks very much for coming in, for bringing us the bottles. Christina Mariani May joining us there from Bonfi Vintners. When we come back, expanding your...